Conan Exploits here, welcome back. So in today's video, we pick up where we left off. We were trying to ping and make sure that we have communication between two virtual LAN interfaces, VLANs. But to enable that, we need to set our data on a stick configuration. And essentially what this does is we have to create two virtual interfaces within one interface or two interfaces depending on how we view our network. So let's get right to it. If you like the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. First of all, to ensure that we have inter-VLAN routing, this port needs to be in which mode? That's right, it needs to be in trunk mode. So let's quickly enter that. I believe that's the <laughs> no we are looking for port port 2 sorry about that so now once we're here we go to switch port mode and what can we do we can set it as trunk essentially if it's a trunk we by doing this you are setting it to that mode unconditionally it will not change normally you have three modes you can have access you can either set it as dynamic in dynamic mode when it connects to another device both ports sort of have a communication which mode are you in i'm in this mode so i'll be in this mode but setting that unconditionally to trunk mode ensures that we'll have that inter vlan routing in the following steps as I demonstrate right now. You'll see quickly it changes the status and during this orange phase of the interface it's communicating to the router and it's saying hey I've changed my mode to trunk mode what port what configuration is your port in so first of all remember we have three interfaces now it's all about choosing one interface and that will be this interface this is the one that will create two virtual interfaces remember we didn't create an IP address for this port so I will exit that and we'll go back to our drawing and analyze a few things first of all which interfaces are we trying to route from and to where because we didn't set a diff uh, main access gateway we also need to ensure that we set up a main access gateway so first of all for us to be able to route we need to give each port an, an IP uh, a network IP address so this port let me go back here this port 1 is in which network 10.10.10 .10 so this is what we'll do we'll give this one an IP address in this network and this one we will split it in two to allow us inter VLAN networking and also we will have created three IP addresses for our default gateway so that essentially whenever you are trying to pin and there is no default gateway what the device does is just drops the packet but when you have a default gateway and the device pings its own network and doesn't find the device you are targeting it directs that traffic to the main access gateway and at the main access gateway it will then look which IP address are you trying to resolve do I have this IP address or do I have this network and should it find that it's connected to that network it will then direct the packet to that network remember we don't have VLANs in routers and that's what will facilitate this whole thing so what we're trying to achieve is first of all back in here let's check this port this is port 1 right yep 
will give that an IP address in that network quickly check what commands can you do you can do IP and we will do just that give it an address so let's give this one what let's give this one 10 slash 24 that will be our first gateway so back to our configuration menu and then we give it the mask dot zero remember I am not subnetting if I was subnetting this will be very different for each of these networks but in this case we are not subnetting so I'll just hit enter and we already have that network available to us so what we'll do is I will add another PC here in the server room it will also be in the native VLAN of this network remember I had shut down all these ports so I have to come back in and I have to bring that port up and running Compass. no shut so once that network is up we will come here and we check on what port is it sync port 4 so just give it address 4 duplicate names blah 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 so just put 10 10.4 that should work sorry come here dot 10 dot 4 with our net mask of 255 255 255.0 we are not subnetting at least not yet so once that is up and running and we've given this port its own gateway we come back here and we exit the next part now we create two virtual ports on this port this was zero 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 yep so we go interface giga bit ethernet we want zero sorry zero, zero dot one you see we're already going to a sub interface subroutine let's quickly check what we can do we can assign an IP address since we want to be able to route throughout this network and this network across the various VLANs that we want to be able to communicate within we come back here and we will give that an IP address of so we need to choose that very very carefully let's do 10.10.20 .10 we can give that 10 and 20 uh, I, or yeah let's give that 10 slash 24 do we have 10 now let's go with something more comfortable let's do 100 slash 24 and the second IP range will be 10.10 .10 dot sorry 20.200 slash 24 so remember if we were subnetting these IP addresses would have to be very very carefully chosen because each subnet range depending on the number of times you've broken down your network will be very unique and you cannot just push these numbers in an arbitrary manner back to this huh? we have our native VLAN which is VLAN 1 and if we go back to our router we have two major VLANs that we want to be routing in between VLAN 40, VLAN 50 we don't want any communication between the IT and the admin room we only want to be routing in between here
So the real issue here is that we had the main interface having an IP address and now we are creating sub interfaces and we are still giving them an IP address. So ideally that brings a conflict. So the next thing is we create another uh, another sub interface to route to the native VLAN and then we'll have our two gateways. One of the most basic things you have to do when you're creating sub interfaces, you need to make sure that the main interface doesn't have existing IP addresses configuration. And the next thing, you have to make sure that the VLANs you're routing are within different networks. So you cannot route within VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 within the same network, but you can route across all VLAN 10s and VLAN 40s in multiple networks. So that is sort of a workaround and what I will basically do, I will fast forward through a basic configuration where I'm changing the IP addresses of all the machines on your right so that we can put them in another network and I'll make sure I share that in the description and yeah, if you have any questions just hit me up. Within this switch we have just one network, uh, I, what I mean is the first three octets point to the first to just one network so we need to replicate that across this by giving them a different range and the different range will be i'll give that network 30 so we'll have now three networks we'll have network 10 we'll have network 20 for the admin and customer care and then we'll have network 30 for the technical side of the network so i have already done that here by giving that IP range 30, 30.200 and that will be the default gateway for these network devices. So what we'll do first of all, we'll come to IP configuration and we'll change their network. This all should be in network 30. So just to run a quick conf configuration check, we are in VLAN 40, we want to check whether IP3 can ping IP10 just to make sure we haven't messed up with everything. and we can look at our interfaces carefully just to see what we have so what we have right here we have on our 000 interface we have a sub interface routing on vlan 10 with this ip address and another sub interface routing on vlan 50 with this ip address so theoretically th what that means is vlan 50 should be able to communicate on vlan 10 and that's what we'll try right now. So essentially what that means for the this machine dot four, if it tries to access a machine outside of its network, every packet should be pushed to this interface. So what we can do is uh, 
invalid gateway entered desktop come back here let's set up our default gateway to be the address on our own network we are in the dot 30 network so our default gateway should be 10.10.30 and now with that set that has accepted let's quickly check with this one this one is in the dot 20 network and that will be 20.100 10.20 10 10 sorry 20.100 we can go back to our command prompt we can open the two machines side by side sorry about that so now that we have that up and running let's do an IP config you find that our default gateway has been populated very easily in our network and that's our IP address if we do an IP config right here we check we see we have our default gateway so what next let's try pinging this machine from this machine and see what happens and there we have it now the there are two things i'd like to highlight let's do the same here while i explain that the reason this first packet failed is simply because we were doing an address resolution protocol an arp call so of sorts what happens is this machine went into the network and said hey i'm looking for this computer do you know where that is and since that ip address is not within its own network it was pointed to the default gateway from the default gateway it looked am i connected to network 30 that's what we were looking for network 20 sorry that's what we we're looking for and since it wasn't connected it knows it's connected it sends out a ping request to the whole network identify yourselves and once it found that machine it quickly sent out the packet to the respective machines and essentially that's how you do interval and routing within different networks so also ideally what should happen is when we come back here the gateway here is 10.10.10 .10 .10. if, Yes, we have activated inter-VLAN routing and we have put our router on a stick whereby it understands what, encapsula <laughs> what encapsulations we are using. But now we need to create a routing table and these are some of the things we will be creating in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, kindly hit that like and subscribe button. If you like the videos, give that thumbs up, make sure you share and I'll see you next time.